Welcome to the PT Legends Podcast, where co-hosts Dave Bess and myself, Scott Carpenter, share our journey in secrets of success. From our humble beginnings as personal training employees of a big box gym, to struggling studio owners that have made every mistake in the book, to where we are now, the owners of a multi-seven-figure business operating multiple personal training studios internationally, and now coach and mentor to fitness professionals in five countries and counting. This is our story, and these are our secrets. Subscribe to our podcast, learn, take action, and build your own fitness empire. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Welcome to the Gym Owner Freedom Show. I'm your host, Scott Carpenter, and with me is my awesome co-host, Dave Best. Today's episode is with special guest, Austin Garber, who is Gone, who has gone from a newly independent personal trainer to gym owner in just 10 months, which is pretty crazy. He quit his job in January of 2022 um, and signed a lease by November that same year. And he's young as hell. So, Austin, uh, <laughs> welcome to the show, man. Thanks for having me. Is this your first podcast? Ever, yeah. It's got yeah. You're like 16 years old. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go, baby. You, you seriously, um, being so young and getting into this and exposed to the people and, and the businesses and the concepts that this young, I can't even, it's going to be amazing to see where you go. Thanks. Thanks. How old are you? I just, I turned 24 in May. So I'm 23 right now. Crazy. Crazy. So you were 22 when we started, uh, when we first met you. Yeah. Wow insane so yeah guys uh we're gonna go through kind of Austin's story and like how did he get here how did he get here so quickly um and what's in store for him um and dave you can lead along too because you've worked with him the most and know him the best but yeah austin what kind of what got you started in in the industry how'd you how'd you kind of land here so i usually i started the gym probably when i was like 15 16 just to get better at football because that was my i thought i was gonna go pro Pretty much like every other kid in high school thinks they're going to go pro in sports. So that's all I did 24-7, seven days a week, probably overtraining like every other young kid in high school. Then concussions. I just got a lot of concussions in football. So I just made the choice not to play anymore. But I still love the gym. So I like, like making a lot of videos and helping people. So I started working and being like a janitor at a local gym here. Then I moved to the Bay Area, which is in California. So like two or three hours away. Then The goal was to open a gym down there, but some things fell through and I moved back up here with my mom to get my everything situation with um, my NASM and everything done, certifications. Mm -hmm. Then I got lucky. There was a local gym owner that was in an apartment right above me. So I got really, really lucky. Right when I moved back, I got to become an intern for like two to three years and worked under him for a long time and built my client base up for, for like two to three years. So it worked out like perfect. Almost like a movie script. Yeah, it's not bad when you're living like right above the place, huh? <laughs> yeah, yeah. And this is in uh, Chico, California, correct? At this yes. point, yes, yeah. Which is a town of what is it? What, what's the population there? Probably like 110,000. Okay, mm-hmm. yeah. So decent sized place. Yeah. Um, not a major metro, but a decent sized place. And so yeah. you started. Um, you started as an intern, then you kind of were full time as a personal trainer, right? Yeah. Definitely the the grind 4 a.m. to 10, then 4 p.m. to like 7, to just the grind six, seven days a week. Yeah. Personal trainer. <laughs> yep. Uh been there, done that. <laughs> um, so yeah, it's it's uh God, it's, it's it's interesting to think about back when I was doing that too. But you accelerated way faster than I did out of that. What kind of led you, what kind of led you to to wanting to go off on your own? Um, so I started kind of falling out with the, my boss. And so I was always friends with Cody Sweet. He was a, he actually owns a gym right next to where I used to train. And so I just, when I quit, I knew I had to get information because I know there's people doing this way better than I'm doing it. And they're already become really successful at owning their own gym. So I just sought out anybody, everybody's information. And he linked me up with you guys in the beginning of January. Yeah. And shout out to Cody sweet. Um, <laughs> anybody has a, a cardio kickboxing gym. 
Oh, he, yeah. he owns um, uh, Sweet Fitness Kickboxing in Chico, right? Yeah. He crushes it, annihilates it. He's a genius at marketing. Mm -hmm. So, and I know he doesn't really publicly do it, but occasionally he works uh, with, with um, cardio kickboxing gyms and kind of group model type stuff. So if you ever need anything, he's a good guy to go to. Yeah. Um, but yeah, and he's a really smart guy. He's a really honest guy. So you knew him um, and you could probably see, holy cow, you can do all right by yourself. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and, definitely. Yeah. And, and so I had actually worked with him too, which is how I knew him. Um, so I was helping him with different sides of the business and thinking bigger with investments and so on and so forth. Um, and what to do with gym proceeds and how to grow. And yeah, he, he connected you to me. Um, and we hopped on and you're like the smartest freaking 22 year old in the world, <laughs> not because of your extensive knowledge, but because you had the foresight to go to people who were already doing it and were already successful. Mm -hmm. And first off, let's be clear, at 22 years old, I was still binge drinking multiple nights a week and was a complete waste of space <laughs> and, and, and just not focused on anything. Um, so you are infinitely smarter than me. <laughs> um, at 22, I was a goon. What were you, Dave, at 22? Oh, it's a mess. So <laughs> my best friend and I, we had a... Uh, we had a show called Clown Shoes. So that's all you need to know. Brad and I, you know, Brad, we had a show and I had long hair with like, like blonde highlights. <laughs> it was not good. I almost killed a stripper. Like it, my life was, was not uh, on the right path at the age of 22. So that's what impressed me so much <laughs> with Austin. Like he legitimately has a 15 year head start. Mm -hmm. And the skills and everything that he's picked up along the way are great. But Austin, here's like, Tell everyone about your burning desire, though, because you do the uncomfortable things that not very many people do. That And, and what I mean by uncomfortable things is building connections and inviting people to go out to lunch, uh, posting on social media, getting uncomfortable. Like, where, where does this come from? Because I think this is a very, I think this is, the reason that we're having this conversation is because of your your burning desire. Where, where did it come from? Um, Probably once I left, I knew I had to change because... I'm super introverted. I don't talk to anybody. I don't like talking to anybody. Probably from the first calls on PTLs, you notice I didn't talk at all, like barely anything. But I knew I had to do what made me so scared. That's why I post a lot on Instagram and reach out to people because I'm so scared and so insecure about people judging me that I know it's, I'm going to grow so much from it. And it's obviously has. It's amazing. That's like one of the most inspiring things I've ever heard. <laughs> I'm serious. Like, it like makes you even want to tear up on it because like <laughs> you aren't innately. Yeah. That that outgoing boom in your face, high energy guy. And this is your chosen field. And mm -hmm. God, it takes a lot of courage to just. Talk to other people that that it's, it's really hard. I didn't do that. That uncomfortable stuff for fear of judgment, for feeling like I wasn't worth anything like I didn't do. I hid from that. And it takes a lot of courage just to go out and seek help like that at that age at 22. It's that's really inspiring. <laughs> and it's, it's just, yeah. And you look at how much you've grown in one year, yeah. in one year from getting uncomfortable and doing that. That's so cool. Yeah. And, and Cause other people, you know what they say? Oh, I'm just, I'm just introverted. So I'm never going to be good at this. I'm never going to be good at sales. I'm never going to do that. Not you. That's awesome. What's your, your big learning lesson, Austin? So you've been with us for, I guess, has it been over a year? Right out of year. Yeah, right out of year. Right out of year. Like, what's your biggest like takeaway so far? Like, what have you grown at the most? Because we've done, you know, objection handling and getting in the pitch. Like, you have some technical things, but like, or maybe that is your big learning. Like, what's your, where, where's the biggest, where's been the biggest growth in you? I think just the confidence to listen to your gut. And because I think a lot of us know what to do. It's just, we're scared. And I think just listening to your gut and feeling confident and talking about over bringing the, like getting over the objections and pitching and like just getting that confidence in yourself. I think it's called like imposter syndrome that a lot of trainers and a lot of gym owners or anybody has is just getting over that and facing it. Mm. It's the best thing I've got from PTL for sure. I love that. Yeah. It's uncomfortable. Cause when you first start off on your own, um, you know, you had a handful of clients and you were charging really low rates too. Yeah. 
right? And so yeah. that, yeah, really low rates. And it's great because you got clients and you got to make a living and stuff. So that's what we all do. We have that fear, right? We got that fear and the only way to get them or retain them or keep them is to charge a really affordable price, right? Yep. And again, you're 22. You're not making a whole bunch of money either, right? Because yeah. uh, our first order of business is when we started, it's like, we got to find a place for you to, to, to rent out of and sublet. Yeah. yeah. Right. So I assign like, go contact all these different places, go. And even the unconventional ones, right? Like sometimes physical therapy places or chiropractors have a spare room that they kind of do stuff. So go, go to these places and you found a place and you're able to rent it, I think, correct? For yeah. not too much money. No, not too much. I think $600. Then it's kind of funny. I think I told you guys, um, she saw how busy I was getting. Then she, yeah. uh, she doubled uh, my rent on me. <laughs> <laughs> yep. And her whole rent in this is a small space. Yeah. And she used it only a few hours a day. It was kind of like yeah. a hobby. She was older. She's about to retire, I think, right? Yeah. It was like a hobby. A bunch of old broads, you know, doing great vines and stuff. Don't yeah. punish me for saying that. I was just joking. <laughs> um, but uh, but yeah, so her whole rent, I think, was like twelve hundred bucks. Right. Yeah. yeah. And then, yeah, she sees <laughs> you're not invading and encroaching on her space or her times, but she sees you're doing really well and she doubles your freaking rent because she can. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Sweet. Um, and yeah, but at that point, you're growing pretty quickly. So how did you acquire? You had some clients that you had. But then you started just meeting and attracting a lot of clients without doing paid ads or anything like that. How did you do that? I think from the just being so scared and talking to people, and that's what I use to my advantage. I call it like the like the mama voice or like the I don't know if I can cuss on here the b word you voice. Can, you can okay, like the bitch, the bitch voice in your head that like doesn't make you do stuff because you're so scared of it. And I just play competitions with myself like. If I know I shouldn't talk to this person or I don't feel like talking to this person, I'm going to do it. And it made me grow so fast. I talked to like the biggest other gyms here and I just took them out to lunch and just asked for their advice. And I just built really good relationships from like massage therapists to personal trainers or to regular PTs. And I got a really lot of great clients from that and just having a good reputation. A lot of my clients are from referrals too. So I got lucky there too. You have done a better job at that probably than anybody else I've ever seen. <laughs> Seriously, uh, no exaggeration. And, and guys, a lot of what he did, like he would just take people out to lunch. So he would take people out to lunch to learn, even to learn from them, right? You would take uh, yeah. some business owner or whatever out to lunch to learn from them. And of course, you get to know, like, they get to know, like, and trust you, right? Yeah. And then at the end of the day, most people have some desire to get in better shape or health. So the fact of the matter is, it just does that and he talks to him and they like him, and they trust him. Yeah. And then they get to learn about his services and then they become clients. Yeah. You did that all over the place, all over Chico, man. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, I got, it was fun. Just getting uncomfortable. That's all it is. Just getting really, really uncomfortable. It's amazing. It's hard enough to people, to, to take for people to take action that aren't uncomfortable with those things. So that's why it's so inspiring that you chose to do it. And you, you're a lot more uncomfortable than the average person with that. Yeah. 100%. Every <laughs> single day. <laughs> what I like most about that though, like it's as we're recording this is 2023. Chat GPT can write better content than all of us combined. Okay. <laughs> right. Like there's all of these, Gym freaking mentor. I mean, we're gym mentors too, and we're the best in the world. But how many gym mentors say, oh, I had this amazing acquisition system, right? Like we just got off of Facebook Live talking about our acquisition system, right? And then it's like, okay, like Scott, how much energy did we use on finding a paid company that's can that can fix those issues there, right? That can nurture leads. Mm -hmm. But nothing beats this strategy. And it's the most uncomfortable of them all, but it's taking people out, getting to know them shaking hands and kissing babies. It's been, that strategy works. It is fell proof, but so, I mean, one out of a million people do it. That's why mm -hmm. Austin's on this podcast, opening up his own gym within 10 months because he did it that way. Yep, that's it. And 99% and of people aren't willing to do it. Mm -hmm. And I'm not saying you have to do it. If you're like, well, I'm doing pretty good. I don't want to do that. No big mm -hmm. deal. There's other ways to do it that are easier. But if you're struggling, 
if you're struggling or you've got big goals and like the Facebook ads aren't panning out for you right now and acquisition is a difficult thing for you at the moment, you've got to do this stuff. You've got to do this stuff. You know, that's why we built an organic acquisition system. If people don't really have the budget or want to take the risk on paid ads right now, then here's how you start. But nothing, nothing, nothing beats just setting appointments with people for lunch or taking them out for coffee or walking in and introducing yourself. That takes balls too. Like, where was your mindset? This is interesting, Austin. So like, like you called it like the bitch voice. Was it just like, did you have a system in mind or was it just that voice talked and you said no and you reached out to someone? Like, walk, like walk me through your system of reach outs. I'm very, I'm very intrigued to know how, how, like how you consistently started taking this action. So I think I got it from you guys and from David Goggins. I don't know if you guys ever read the book, Can't Hurt Me. Yep. I, I, I like him a lot. <clears throat> I got to listen to that, man, because Dick Goggins is awesome. <laughs> it's really, really good. But I think the advantage that we had, I think you guys taught me was even like I have a girlfriend, you guys have wives. The last time that we actually like asked our wives, like, hey, how are you doing? Like, honestly, how are you doing? And think about there's like millions of people walking around and nobody's ever asked them how they're doing with like no strings attached at all. And they just need somebody to like smile and ask them how they're doing. And they just change their whole day. And I use that to my advantage. But going to the, like, the bitch voice, I know what I have to do, but it's so scary because I care what people think about me so much that I use that to my advantage because I know I'm going to grow there because I know it's so uncomfortable. Even going on this podcast right now, I talked to David, I was like, oh, I'm so nervous, <laughs> but I know I'm going to grow so much from this. That I use it to my advantage. I use my bitch voice to my advantage to grow even farther than I can. That's awesome. That's how I use it to my advantage. That's awesome. You know, I challenge myself too. Whenever I'm procrastinating on something that I should be doing because it's uncomfortable or it's scary or I might hear a no, right? I, I procrastinate on it. And when I catch myself doing that, I'm like, all right, stop being a little bitch. You're being a little <laughs> bitch right now. You know, and that does it, it challenges you like, do, do I really want to do that? No, let's go. Yeah. You know, yeah. Let's man up and do it. Yeah. yeah. What's crazy though, Scott, is like, this is coming from a 20. How old are you, Austin? 23. This isn't supposed to happen. Like, this is something no. that you and I struggle with, Scott. I guarantee yeah. every gym owner that's listening out there, like, you're like shaking your head, like, Austin, like, this, this, like, I didn't know this story, like, that, like, how this all came to be. Like, I knew you were doing some of it, but. Like, dude, it's inspiring that you're you're 24 years old and you're doing this type of work that 0.01% of not just gym owners, but any entrepreneur is doing. So it's that's why. <laughs> <Thanks, Dan. laughs> yeah, it's not 24 yet. It'll be 24 in May, right? <laughs> no, 24, yeah. 23. And that, that is incredible because I was a dumbass for a very long time, an incredibly wow. long time, basically easily all of my 20s. Mm -hmm. So it's just... Yeah, it's it's wild to see you having that sort of kind of that maturity and and that wisdom this early in life. I don't know where you got it from. Probably got to thank your mom, you know, if yeah. I ever meet her on a call. But uh, yeah. that's pretty intense because I did not I did not possess that. I, where did, I, yeah, where'd you get it from, Austin? Um, I would probably want to say just finding myself. Um, because in high school I was same thing. Never talked. I used to like, wear headphones in high school. So nobody would talk to me. I wouldn't have like music playing. I always have headphones in. So like nobody would talk to me, but I knew I have to do this. And I, I get it from a lot of podcasts. So this mm -hmm. is the advantage that young guys have is we have you guys as failures on podcasts nowadays or in books. So we can learn so fast that you guys didn't have that. Mm -hmm. So I think it's, in my opinion, I think it's the easiest time right now to be super successful, especially super young, but you just have to go get it. Because we have this, we have podcasts, we have audio books, we have everything. You are so right. You are everything. absolutely right. And and yeah, it took me years before I hired somebody, you know, my first coach and stuff like that. But you're right. It just, the internet wasn't, the internet was there. It just wasn't, was it what it was, yeah. you know, and now it's there and podcasts. Oh, I love podcasts, right? Because yeah. you're not going to learn shit flipping on the TV. <laughs> um, yeah. But podcasts are such a good conduit. And I think when I struggled and I had, my tough things that my favorite episodes were the ones that when successful people, I was listening to them, they were sharing their struggles mm -hmm. and where they effed up and they thought they couldn't hack it. And they fell flat on their face. Not, I mean, it, it's just good to know that I'm a, I'm not alone. And that B that they were there, but look at where they're at now. 
right? Yeah. I think the biggest thing people have to do is kind of drop your ego and ask for help, especially in the whole fitness industry. You have to ask for help. And my, my um, advantage is I wasn't, I barely graduated high school. So I don't think I, I hire coaches all the time. I just don't think I know I have to get, they know more than me. So I have to get a positive out of it for sure. (laughs) Awesome. Awesome. So you quit your job. Yeah. You had a few clients, you sublet a space, and then you started just meeting people all over Chico. Yeah. What was the next step in that evolution? Um, probably just having good enough structure to like on the DC would really help a lot because it can weed out the people that you don't really want in your gym. So that helped a lot what I got from you guys. Then having the PC and having the structure to have deep conversations to figure out like what's really causing the pain because I think it's deeper than just losing weight and gaining muscle. It's, it has to go deeper than that. It's probably most likely from like a childhood, which I've found. And you have to, as coaches, you have to dig in that deep to really change somebody's life for good and to keep the weight off for good. And what you guys taught me how to do that. That's awesome. Yeah. It takes, it takes some reps to get good at that. Yeah. Right. And I know I remember when, when I was talking to Lakin, And she had mentioned that she'd been on calls with you. This is a while ago, but she said like Austin now versus Austin three months ago, (laughs) an entirely different person, (laughs) entirely different person. What did you see during that, Dave? Oh my God. It's, it's just looking back in this, like just talking with Austin, just like this, the kid, it was just, it's, it's insane how like quiet he was. Like I was nervous for him. He was <laughs> freaking shy and introverted. And you could tell, like, how much did you sweat during those initial? I bet your back had to be soaking wet with sweat. Am I correct with that, Austin? It's to this day. I'm like, do I want to, do I want to say I'm busy right now? Every <laughs> single time is a coaching call. Every single time. It's so uncomfortable because I look in front of people. I'm like, these people are in their thirties and forties. They've done this before. I don't, I'm just 23. I don't know what I'm talking about. But once you get in there, you see everybody struggling together and it's it's a big, good atmosphere to have fun. Once you're in it, you're in it. It feels good. But the first like five minutes, you're about to go into the Zoom call. You're like, I don't know if I really want to do this today. (laughs) Every single time. It's just like working out. It's just he consistently put in the reps. uh, And I know this conversation. This is probably six months ago. If Lakin would talk to Austin now, another six months later, it's probably quadrupled. Or maybe even five X. Like now, when he's on our calls, I mean, he's a he does not uh, handle objections uh, or pitch a, a transformational program like a twenty three year old. Like it, <laughs> it's seasoned. It, he's seasoned. But like, like Austin, where do you get it from? Right? Like, where do you get this passion for fitness at? Because I think that's something like you have so much conviction to it. Like, where did the where did the 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 fuel come for that passion? I think definitely seeing my mom struggle with her weight her whole life because I've been an athlete my whole life and I've never, cause I was immature and didn't get why, like, why can't you just lose weight? It's easy for me. I'm in high school. I've done tons of sports. It's easy for me. Right. I didn't understand the struggles of like a, like a mom. I definitely a single mom. Like I think that's one of the hardest jobs in the world is to be a single mom or even being a mom. You get the whole world pretty much on your back. And to now you have to like, cook food and prep food almost two meals now i think that's what my passion drives from is seeing my mom struggle her whole life and her story it just makes my life a lot it makes my life look a lot simpler than the stuff she went through so just the passion came from definitely seeing my mom struggle through everything in her life not just health and fitness just everything going through her life and i know my gym which is till this day is to change mom's life because i wish my mom had me when I was younger and seeing her struggle, seeing her cry every day, looking at the weight, seeing her way out chicken breast, no flavoring, white rice, like the average person. And I absolutely hated it. I hated the trainers she trained with. They were super mean, like killed her every single day, didn't have energy to do nothing. And I vow to this day to not do that or change, change the way fitness is seen by definitely by moms, for sure. That's where my passion comes from. That's so good. <laughs> That's so good. Yeah. <laughs> so good. And wow, man. And yeah, a few months and you keep leveling up and you keep learning everything. And sh- you 
showed up to the dang calls every week, multiple times a week. So your level up process, it was just like, right. Yeah. And then because you were so smart to realize the power of relationships way earlier than anybody Mm -hmm. and, and you're a genuine person. And so things fell into play for you to get to your own fricking, uh, your own gym. Yeah. How'd that happen? So you guys gave me the opportunity and Cody, we, we came, we had, we kind of bullshitted a couple of times. Like, Hey, we should open a green light, which is you guys' franchise. We just bullshit and bullshit and bullshit. And one day we just saw each other at the gym. And kind of looked at each other like, you want to do this? And we're like, yeah, fuck it. What do you got to lose? Then really? we you guys the call. <laughs> then we just had a meeting. Then we called you guys like the next day and said we're down. So uh, it was like instant. Yeah. It was <laughs> awesome. It was awesome. Because Cody's, Cody, like he, I mean, he just crushes his, his yeah. cardio kickboxing plays. And, and, you know, he's kind of bored there, right? He's like, he's like, I need to do the next thing. Um, whether it's another one or this or that. And yeah, he, you guys had a great relationship. Yeah. Um, and you know, at the end of the day, like it all came together where you guys are going in on it together. You're the, you're the operating partner. And it's amazing because Cody also has this huge network. Yeah. This gym is so it's very high volume, right? So he's got all these clients who need more than workouts. He's got, he's got all these contacts and so the synergy between the two places is going to be insane, right? Yeah. It's going to be insane because Greenlight Personal Training is all about overlapping PT. So you have some good volume, but a very high price point, right? And it's more than just workouts, right? It's bringing mentorship, exactly what you want to do and how you help, wanted to help your mom. You oh, get yeah. to do that for every single one of, your, one of your clients with the program. And I think it truly changes people's lives mm-hmm. going through the mentorship. I think everybody should go through a mentorship and really look in deep and find the the root cause of why you're acting like this and why you're like this and why the weight's not getting off you. Mm-hmm. I think that's every single client should go through it, in my opinion. Every single okay. person should go through every it. Every single person. Yeah, no yeah. matter what it is. Yeah. Dave, Dave has seen life-changing things by yeah. the, the different programs he's done, mentorship programs, right? A hundred percent. But the, Austin, like we're gonna get a lot get a little salesy here, like as a technician. That's how you're going to pitch your program, right? There. <laughs> Just like that, right? Like we get so wrapped up in scripts and like in Austin, he does the study. And every time I talk with Austin, he's like, check out my new script. That passion and the conviction that he mm-hmm. has. Everybody needs a mentorship. Everybody needs that little, you know, every like that, that bitch voice that you said. Like we all have that little gremlin in our head that says we're not good enough, right? Yep. Help someone identify that that's what's getting in the way of you achieving your goals, then they spend thousands of dollars. So, Austin, when this podcast comes out as your coach, you're going to watch that over and over. That's your pitch right there, my friend. <laughs> that's it. And guys, that's exactly how you sell. You sell through stories. Yeah. That's where the passion comes from. It's not about backing somebody in a corner, right? So they they finally break down and say, okay, I need to do this. Like you sell the store, you inspire people into taking action. Yep. You coach them into taking action because just like you said, Austin, everybody needs to go through a mentorship, at least one yeah. in their lifetime. Cause I, I've my recent PC, probably one of the most saddest PCs over here is young girl, my age, she was um, sexually molested when she was like three or four. Right. Then she told herself and told herself in the mirror that, I'm going to put on 50 pounds so he can stop. And so that's where her pain is. And that's why she can't lose weight because it's deep down. And she's never told her family, never told anything. I got that in like a PC and you will never find that in the other lifting weights or nutrition. Nothing. that you have to dig that deep to really find why this person is not losing this weight. And it's one of the most saddest stories I've ever heard in my life. It goes to show that guys, what we do is more than just give workouts. Mm-hmm. Yeah. If that's all you're doing, right, you're missing some of it. And, you know, we joke around how we're like part time therapists and stuff like that. Right. But guys, so th- this is what if Austin, if she's not going to re- who else did she review? Who else is she going to reveal that to? Right. To help make some progress. This likely no one. Yeah. Right. 
And now that he knows that he can truly help her start to change the way she views it because it's been warped over the years of stuff like that. And what you do is so important. You can be the absolute world to somebody. You just don't know it. And so you really owe it to, to, to learn how to, to acquire these skills. Yeah. It's amazing, man. It's amazing. <laughs> God, you're so smart, <laughs> and, like wise. Yeah. You're so young. It's really <laughs> weird. Like this is a very <laughs> weird podcast. Like Austin, because I haven't went like this. I don't think we've ever went this in depth, right, Austin? No. Like I knew he's like deep, but like he's like speaking. And I'm just like, I'm just shaking. I'm just nodding my head along. And it's just, it's just, it's just really, it shocks me to my core. You're this young man. It just shows how you're really going to make a mark on the world. And it's it, like, you're going to help people truly transform their lives. Uh, and it's not, it's not about the weight. And it's so amazing that you'd like for years, up until I was 36, I thought as my job as, you know, a fitness person was, you know, help people look better in the mirror. And it's, it's really, it's insane to see someone your age truly understand that fitness isn't about what you see on the other end. It's how you feel. So yeah, it's going to be, it's going to be amazing to watch your journey. My friend, the next, the next thousand days are going to be crazy. Cause I, I think, cause most of the gym owners listen to this podcast, right? Mm-hmm. I think majority of people know, listen to this podcast. They don't go to the gym for, to lose weight or gain muscle anymore. They go to battle some demons in their head. So why not coach people to go through it? So like I, the thing I have in my head is, what are the questions that I would want somebody older to ask me to really figure out the pain I'm going through? And those are the kind of questions I ask my clients to find really the deep pain with what they're going through. Because I know I have deep pain. I wish somebody, a father figure, because I didn't have a dad. So I wish a father figure would ask me now, going through all the struggles and stuff. So those are the questions I ask myself and I ask my clients to really figure out what's this person really, really going through. Because more than just, like you said, more than losing weight. It's deeper than that. It has to be deeper. It's awesome, man. So absolutely <laughs> amazing. And that's where you find your power is when you go yeah. that way and you get some self-awareness. Yeah. Right? And then you use it. Like you said, you use those things to your advantage. Yeah. Find your power, use it to your advantage. And that's the only way you're going to help people change and achieve that change for lasting for a lifetime. Yeah. You're not going to do it with, with working out and in a diet you give them. Right. It's got to come from deeper to be lasting. So, man, that's amazing. What's uh, what's one piece of advice that you would like to give to any personal trainer who is interested in getting in a place or any gym owner who's struggling right right now? What would you say? What is your one piece of advice to them? Um, look, 10 years, not 10 months. Like, Where do you want to be in 10 years, not 10 months? Because you can plan for 10 months, but then you're kind of stuck in the same spot. If you plan for 10 years, you'll be just fine. Just trying to, like the turtle in the hair, right? You want to win. I, I don't know if you guys know Nipsey Hustle. I'm a big Nipsey Hustle fan. He's like a rapper. And it's called The Marathon Continues. So everything's like a marathon, not a sprint. So planning for 10 years, not 10 months. That's how I look at it. So everything I'm doing now is for, I kind of ask my older self, like, what would I do? 10 years from now. And that's kind of how I make my decisions now is like a, I guess I'd be 34 year old. So that's how I make my decision. I even have a, like a notepad and I'll write to my older self like, Hey, I made this decision. What do you think about it? And I'll try to get in that mindset of like, how would I make this decision when I'm 34 or 44 or 54 and kind of thinking ahead. Um, Cause I think if you keep thinking super, super small, you're going to stay super, super small. You have to think years, years, years down the road to really help yourself now. Because it's going to be a grind either way. My know plan 10 years down the road, my opinion. Unreal. I'm making a note <laughs> of my calendar to listen to this podcast when it gets released so I can learn something. I'm seriously going to listen to this podcast and make notes of what you say and start to implement some of these things in my life. Unfucking believable. <laughs> Oh my God. Uh, Dave, is there anything you want to add? <laughs> yeah, I'm just shocked. Like, let's have Austin on. Yeah, talk about <laughs> his journey, not like fucking teach me stuff. <laughs> like, it just shows, Austin, you're going to be a freaking millionaire, millionaire, millionaire in 10 years. And it's <laughs> like you have this mindset. Like, this is something, Scott, we struggle with. Everything Austin's saying, 
everything, every entrepreneur, every gym owner, like we all struggle with this. So having that shift, just like you had Austin at such a young age, man, I mean, it's, it's impossible not to make millions of dollars for yeah, absolutely. having that shift. It's impossible. And that may or may not be the goal, man, but uh, the money, the money is a representation of the value that you bring to the world. And what you're, this journey that you're on at the very start of it, you're like at the, you know, the one mile marker, not even, okay, not even, you're like a quarter mile into this marathon. Yeah. And the value that you're bringing, you're going to continue to bring, it's, it's going to make you a very wealthy man. One of my favorite quotes I like to listen to is called, um, so I don't know if I'm not a, whoever's listening like God or whoever's up there, I almost like to play competition with them or like they set this in my life or to me overcome. And they, sometimes I think they don't think I could overcome it. So that's why I play games with myself. Or I think there's a checklist that the, let's say you die at 55 or 65. And there was a, a dream you that could have been that. And it's like, this was the Scott that you were supposed to be, but you didn't cause you were scared. And that's why I'm really, really scared of if I die, and I didn't accomplish everything that I was supposed to accomplish. That's what kind of haunts me and keeps me going. Because I know we're put here on earth. Everybody listens. Everybody's put on your earth for a reason. And you just have to feel it and push the limits and try everything and listen to people, listen to podcasts and do everything that you're scared to do. Because you're supposed to be who you keep dreaming of. Just don't be Amazing. scared. Amazing. I can't <laughs> wait for this episode to run. I really can't. Um, Austin, thank you so much, man. You are massively inspiring. And, <laughs> and I can't wait for your book to come out. I don't know if it's going to be in two years or five years or whatever it's going to be, but I can't wait for your, your book to come out. And I want an autographed copy. Um, and I, I look forward to that day, man. It's been a pleasure knowing you for like literally just a year now and seeing and being a part of that growth and, and what you have to do and what you're going to do. It's freaking amazing. And I'm pretty honored to have met you. Thanks. Thanks guys. Thanks for the invite. <laughs> Absolutely, man. Guys, thank you so much for watching the gym owner of freedom show. Um, it's such a powerful episode. So don't forget to subscribe to the show. Leave us a five-star review, check out our free resources in the notes. Um, and if you know, Anybody that would, would be inspired by this message and needs to hear this message in Austin's story, please, please, please share this. Thanks a lot, guys, and we'll see you next week. Dave and myself, Scott, would love to thank you for tuning in and listening to the PT Legends podcast. You can get direct access to us by joining our free Facebook group. Go to www.facebook.com slash groups slash seven figure personal trainer that's seven figure personal trainer with the number seven don't forget to subscribe to the podcast so you can keep on learning and keep on living finally if you picked up any tips whatsoever in this episode that you found helpful be sure to leave us a review and tell us what you like best about it can't wait to see you on the next episode